Hello, welcome to One Moment Wiser. This is Christy Bridges, and I have a special guest for us tonight. I know we usually do these on weekends, but I thought that my friend Heather was worth a Monday night. And I know it's the middle of the summer. You probably would have rather spent the whole day on vacation, and you may have had to work. So you need uh, something to relax to. That's what we're here for. Heather is the author of The God Box. And she's also the author of a couple of other books, Deeply Wounded Hope. And um, she has a podcast on, well, most podcast sources. You can find her at Heather V. Shore. And Heather is uh, here because we've been talking about mental health this year. And a lot of people are confused as to you know where our body stops and our spirit starts where science stops and god starts and i just want to say there's not a line for that our we are body we are mind we are spirit and we work in all of those realms and so does our creator so heather's going to share with us a little bit about her experience letting the Holy Spirit bring wholeness into her life. Heather, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you, Christy, for having me. I'm excited to be here. So tell me a little bit about um, where this came from. Mm -hmm. Well, um, to be completely transparent and honest, it, it came from my story. So a while ago, um, earlier in life, I was raised in a Christian home, but then I married into a situation that contained domestic violence. And so coming out of that was um, a very tumultuous time, right? And at that young time as well, you don't realize how much trauma comes with you from something like that. And so you sort of take that with you in life. And uh, fast forward in um, 2010, I marry uh, my ex-husband and we got, we got married then. And little did I know how much of my past I had really brought into the whole situation. Um, I had met Jesus at about the age of 26 and fully came to understand him more in my heart than necessarily my head, right? You, you're raised mm -hmm. at home and you have all this knowledge but I didn't really know him in my heart. And so at 26, before getting into this marriage, um, you know, I came to know the Lord. And um, when I got into this marriage, though, I didn't recognize really how much I'd brought with me in terms of sort of baggage probably would be the best, best term for that and everything. And um, I would say probably like five or six years is when things started to start change. Um, I did. I changed my volume. <laughs> I didn't realize it would make a noise. It's like Please, the transformation happened. That's where you were going to go, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, woo, this is getting real, real spirited. Um, we're getting a little Disney here. <laughs> Please continue. It's okay. So during that time leading up to like 2017, 2018, I went through significant, significant health issues. Mm -hmm. um, we unfortunately went through infertility and lost three children before having our two children and everything. And during that time, I think it added on to the layers, right? Like this sort of like this volcano, like everything's starting to build. Mm -hmm. And I don't really recognize, you know, truthfully what's going on with me trying all the things of the world to try and figure it out while still going to church you know loving jesus going to bible study all of that loving my neighbors but there's just some yuck underneath and so we move up to this beautiful town of evergreen colorado which is in the foothills of denver at about seven thousand feet so it's absolutely beautiful and Jesus really showed up in my life. I, I just don't know how to explain it, right? Other than he just truly showed up in my living room one day. And it was like, okay, we're going to sit here and we're going to heal. And I am going to undo all of the yuck that's going on inside of you. 
because I want to heal you and I want to use you for my kingdom. He's like, let's go run this race together and let's end life together. Well, well, that's a big, it's a big statement. And, um, during this time, right. I'm questioning whether or not I have the gift of discernment, not realizing that I really do. And I had some people in my life that were very confirming of that. I'm like, because I, I would hear things a little bit differently, or maybe I'd get a download that I didn't really understand because like I was as explaining a little bit earlier when we were off camera, you know, I came from a cessationist background. So this whole Holy spirit thing was very different. And um, God just started putting people in my life that really started to bring about Holy Spirit in a different way and the Bible in a different way. And it all sort of came full circle, right? Yeah. In 2018, um, in 2019 is where I just, the Lord really just started to heal me completely. And so I started going through um, inner healing, somewhat like sozo and counseling and things of that nature but all from a holy spirit perspective that mm -hmm. transformed just transformed me i had some healing, but really at the end of the day i had a lot of emotional healing and what was really cool people started to see a difference in me I, I, wow. started, you know, I started to smile more i had joy um i wasn't nearly as cranky and um like things just need to shift because God really started to heal all of these that I had gone through trauma earlier in life, you know, and then to go through really started to move me thing of like I'm gonna pause you for just a second. We're getting a little bit of audio um interference, I guess, some muffling. So I'm going to reiterate a couple of the things that I know that you've said. Uh -huh. um, for those of you who have never heard of the cessationist um, belief system, there is a doctrine in Christianity that believes that what Jesus did and what the Holy Spirit did and what God did for thousands of years before Jesus, um, all the miracles that happen are no longer happening. That uh, The doctrine believes that when Revelation was written, that God stopped operating in the way he had operated for thousands of years. And so Heather has um, discovered that's not actually the case that we can't put God in a box. We can't say, okay, God, you're done here. And now we've got to go it on our own. Um, that's definitely not the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. So um, you were in your living room. And Jesus mm -hmm. said, okay, we're going to, we're going to stop right here. We're going to change mm -hmm. this future. Mm -hmm. And then you started to experience the Holy Spirit and um, receive some teaching that caused such a transformation that people noticed it in you. Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, good. The audio is back. Okay. So go for it. Uh, yeah. So people just started to notice a difference. Um, but I will honestly say, and not everyone has this, I would say, experience or capability to do this. But at the time I was a stay at home mom. So I could spend two to three hours on doing all the yuck, right? With my inner healing counselor praying through a lot of things. And I realized not everyone has the time to do that. Um, and God and Holy Spirit can work faster than that. Um, absolutely. And But for in my case, there were just, I would say it was probably a season of like six months where I was going through weekly, if not every other week sessions of like two to three hours at a time with Holy Spirit, just really just digging at the roots of all the stuff that was just stuck below that needed to change and heal. Mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things that I really, I, I came to understand because I've gone to counseling. I've been not bashing counseling. Counseling is wonderful. They're right. wonderful. And I think most people need it, but like I had done the EMDR, I had done all the different trauma things that, you know, when you have trauma, you go and try, right? And none of them worked. 
like uh, doing counseling with Holy Spirit. I, I don't have explanations for some of it because it just, it is supernatural. Like you'd come out of a session um, and I can go a little bit more into this in a minute, but um, you'd come out of a session and you'd be like, what? I am free from the spirit of control. Yes. Or I am free from the spirit of comparison. Like whatever it was that I was getting delivered from, I was free of. And I was like, this is insane. And then I go into like a natural situation where say, especially with like comparison, especially where I lived, where it was extremely wealthy. And one was of, you know, either a trip in Aspen or I, I don't know where, I'm just using you know, an example. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have this like jealousy or envy or anything like that. I would just be genuinely happy for them. Oh, isn't it nice when you can just be happy for good things that happen to people or yes. good qualities that they have and you can go exactly. good job, God, yeah. without being stuck yeah. in a negative yeah. cycle from it. Yeah. And then we had a family member who um, purchased a lake house and I, before, right, if you mm -hmm. two years before, I would have totally been judgy, gossiping, whatever, you know, or comparing, right? Because how come we can't buy one of those? La, 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 la. You know, you go down that path. Yeah. And I sat there with them and I was so excited. And I just, and these words came out of my mouth. And, and again, Holy Spirit, this isn't me talking to me. It's Holy Spirit. I'm like, I wonder how God's going to use you to bless others with that house. And they were like, Heather, that's a great point, you know? Yes. I said that two years ago, the two years prior to sitting down and working everything out with Holy Spirit. So I think for me uh, personally, and I've just seen it work in other people's lives, which is how the podcast got started. Mm -hmm. was, there's this wholeness that Jesus can bring. And it's like nothing else works. I, I, I mean, that's been my personal experience just between the natural and the supernatural. Um, Jesus wins every time. That's beautiful. And you know, something you said really reminded me of uh, the psychological aspect here too. When we, uh, when we come out of trauma or just negative environments in our childhood or in our younger years, we tend to seek out people who are also like that, who, who yes. also yeah. see the world as out to get them, who also mm -hmm. see the, the life as a I lose situation, right? Or you lose, I lose. Um, and so it's, you know, that unfortunately can get us into abusive or manipulative or narcissistic relationships. And when you're free of that, you still carry that, that attitude, that that habit of thinking mm -hmm. that really diminishes your joy and really restricts your healthy relationship ability, right? The people yeah. that are around you that, that want to be healthy, they aren't attracted to that. And mm -hmm. so we can't always, it's good to have a counselor, but yes. we need is someone who's with us in every situation who will give us clear, honest, loving feedback. And we can't always get that, but the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God, our creator who loves us and made us and has been with us through every moment mm -hmm. of our lives, through every situation, and who can give us the mind of Christ. Yeah. God wants to enter into that situation and help us to, to dig up, you know, here's a problem. I don't know what's wrong with it. And God can say, hey, let me show you what's wrong with it. Here's my word. Um, here's a, a thing that I feel, and I don't know why I feel this way. Okay. Um, or I don't know how to change this reaction, but I know I don't like it. It's icky. And God can say, hey, I can help you in those moments. Yes. Um, let, me, let me give you my spirit, and, and I can nudge you in the right directions and i can relieve you of all that burden of feeling like you're on the losing end just because somebody else is blessed mm -hmm. oh i just love that that makes me excited and it made me think of something so one of the things that i personally struggled with was sort of that poverty spirit yes Ooh, comparison really is tied to a lot of that because when you have a poverty spirit you don't see that the kingdom is beyond your comprehension and that 
everybody gets a piece of the kingdom if you're in Jesus. And so that there's enough to go around. But when you're struggling with that poverty spirit, you just, you don't see things in a right way. You don't see things through the Trinity and what it provides for you. And so um, I don't know if it was just sort of a, an outcome of the way I was raised and everything, but I've had to sort of come out of that and to recognize that, you know, our inheritance is through him. And so he has a lot for us when it comes to that. And we don't have to stay stuck thinking that there's a lack because there's not a lack. Oh, that's so true. I dealt with that myself a lot. Um, the fear of wasting what God had given me, still deal with that a little bit, you know, because I, I want to be responsible, but in a different way now. Uh, but the fear of, of losing, the fear of not having enough, because I grew up, you know, with, we didn't always have. Sure. And um, it, we, it's, I think in a way, it's healthy for kids not to get everything they want, right? It's, it's yeah. good, it teaches us grit. But at the same time, when um, the family struggles just to get by, just to get the electric and things like that, sometimes it does develop that idea of lack. But mm -hmm. God will supply all of our needs. Yes. The Bible says that. The Bible says God gives us everything, has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And when he says life, he doesn't mean mundane, you know, keeping the lights on. He means life. And yep. God will fulfill his purposes. He's always going to fund what he wants to do through us. And there's a partnership involved there, but we can trust him. We can trust him. I'm and glad I, that you heard that. Yeah. And I think one of the cool things, too, like you're saying with partnership, is to ask the Lord, how do you want to partner together? Yes. I mean, it's such a partnership. It's such a relationship. And you need to have open lines of communication. And that's what Holy Spirit is. He's there to communicate with you um, on a regular basis, <laughs> sometimes hourly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> you said that people don't always have time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a mindset as well. That's a lack yes. of mindset, yeah. just like the money, you know, lack. Mm -hmm. um, we have a real, especially in this society, we have a real idea that we're always in a hurry. We're always in a rush. When in reality, there are things we can do to have time for what is important enough for us. Mm -hmm. you, when you started dealing with that stuff and it became that important and got, you saw God making transformation, mm -hmm. I guarantee that there were some things that just didn't seem as important to you. Because you you knew that you needed to dig in, and we we can give ourselves that respect. We can give God the opportunity to do what He actually designed for us mm -hmm. um, in the first place. And so, yeah, we we can give that to ourselves and to God. Um, what when you started experiencing this, mm -hmm. did you? I know that there are people who have never actually had um, an experience with the Holy Spirit because they've kind of, you know, thought that whole thing was woo-woo, right? Um, <laughs> I might believe that I'm not going to hell, but I just don't know if I'm ready to start seeing things. Maybe that's a medical issue, right? Sure. Um, so tell me about this because it is real. We are not in these bodies for eternity which means we are bigger than these bodies. Yeah. And that means there is more than what we can see, right? More than the decaying world around us. So tell me about um, your experience with that. What Absolutely. You said you saw things. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, Yes. <laughs> so like I was saying the, um, that I had some health issues, right. As a result of, um, trauma, I, probably uh, at the end of the day, I believe it was all trauma driven. And I realized, I mean, I even told friends, I'm like, I would have never had the surgeries I had, had I known about healing, had I known about Isaiah 53, five, that by his stripes we were healed. Like there's just so many things I would have done differently. 
Um, but you know what? Now I pray for creative miracles because he's the guy of miracles. And so, um, but yeah, in 2018, unfortunately, I had to have three, four cancer removal and I had to have my thyroid removed. And the week of my surgery, I was just sitting there praying. My kids are tiny, right? They're on the floor playing and everything. And it was literally seven days before, seven days before my surgery. This presence came through my living room window. And I won't ever forget it because I was quick enough to recognize. I don't even know how I recognize this in the next I put my phone into the picture. And so I have a picture of whoever this is that came to my living room. And I have never felt that love this cycle. And I don't know, I in my experience, I doubt I will ever feel this until I get to the other side of it. But it was so real that it had me on my face weeping. Like weeping tears of joy and just like because there was such a holy presence in the room. Wow. So you're sitting there with your kids. Sure. You're about to have this surgery and you yeah. see this presence and you just felt the love. I felt I've never experienced that. I mean, it was such an amazing presence of love. Um, I recently showed the picture to some friends and they were like, because I thought it was an angel. I thought it was an angel that showed up. Um, and they were like, we wonder if it was Jesus. And I had never taken that that sort of mindset before because I just figured it was the other stuff running around doing his bidding <laughs> and everything. But you never know. I won't know. All I know is that the loving presence of Jesus was in that room. Yeah. And well, he said, if we abide in his word, then he and the father will come and live with us. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't know that we always see him, right? That's a rare kind of opportunity. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's literally what he said. Yeah. And there's no, I, I understand. I probably wouldn't have expected it to be Jesus either because you know you think oh he's up on a throne and we'll see him someday but he walked through walls to help Thomas know that it was really him and you know so who knows but that was my first experience and then shortly thereafter I met Bible study with my son and everything my son and my daughter and he's real tiny he's three or four at this point I, I'd have to go back and do all the math in my head, but it's the end of the day and I don't know. <laughs> no math. It's <laughs> mathless math Monday. <laughs> and that's math Monday. And um, he, there's this cross on the wall, like it's Easter time and it's like draped and everything. And um, he looks up and he goes, he's like, mommy. And I'm like, what? He's like, that looks like the person that was in my room the other day. And I was like, I'm like, I'm sorry, what? So that's what I'm saying. Like these things just started happening. And I, I'm over here going, what is going on? Meanwhile, I have an ex-husband who's completely deconstructing out of his faith at the time. And he thinks we've gone cuckoo. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Come in, I'm starting to get words of like knowledge and I'll like tell him. And he's like, you need to go. He would tell me, even though he didn't believe anymore, and he'd be like, you need to go pray. <laughs> He's like, I want to do this. <laughs> and so things just really started shifting and changing for us as a family. And, and yeah. And so it sort of just went from there. Um, and then, and then God's just been on the move ever since. So that's been the really fun part of all of this. That is fantastic. And I mean, but I tell you what, when God comes to visit, um, your life starts to change. And you have yeah, two books and you're doing podcasts. Now, I have a question about the word of knowledge because sometimes um, it's so exciting we can't help but share. But sometimes we do share with people who, um, who could take our faith down a notch. If you had to do it again, mm -hmm. would you have shared that with him. Yes and no. I th think yes to a certain extent because I think I was supposed to walk out my faith in front of him while we were still married, right? To show God that things had changed in my life, gotcha. to be an example to him. Um, 
because at the end of at the end of our marriage, God just kept speaking First Corinthians seven fifteen over me of like let the unbeliever go in peace, because mm -hmm. um, it was quite a transformation to watch him completely just deconstruct out of his faith and leave faith all together. And um, but then at the same time, you're right, and I always think of that verse, you know, don't throw your pearls before swine. Right. And I've had to learn that lesson the hard way because you do get so excited, right? And then I've started to realize like, well, maybe that's just for me and Jesus. Like that's just between us, you know, and that I'm just going to pray on that. And then you'll make it known when I'm supposed to say something about it. Thank you. I want to pause right there. You pray on that and then God lets you know when it's the right time. Going into situations so often, I just ask God, Lord, help me to speak your words, no more, no less. You know, let me just share what you want shared right this moment with yeah. this person. And and so I want to make sure if, if you are listening to this mm -hmm. and God is giving you revelation, don't be shy. Be wise, right? So you don't have to try to cover up. We don't have to fake being normal. Um, <laughs> we are in this world to be a light, not, you know, stuck under a bushel. People don't know until someone shines and um and people don't you know they just like you know many of us have people think mm -hmm. that stuff is in the past that stuff is for somebody else whatever when god is speaking to a person he uses very clear um images very clear the things that are directly for that person uh, that that resonate with that person and that doesn't mean when we talk about God speaking or the Holy Spirit visiting Jesus visiting you know we don't always see with our eyes or hear with our our ears mm -hmm. but there will be something said in a conversation heard on the radio read in the word dreamt in your dreams there will be something yep. that will happen and it you'll you know it was for you yeah, because it relates to something or you will know it's for somebody else. And you really ask God, is it time for me to share this with this person? Help me to do it your way and do it, share it, whether they receive it or not, mm -hmm. because those seeds get planted. And if it really was a word for them, there's something in there that will not quit echoing until they go. Yeah, that was God. Um, it's going to echo in their hearts. So thank you for, for talking about that because that's a, they're just things that, you know, we only learn by community. So I appreciate you sharing that. And through experience. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my goodness. This has been so good, Heather. So, um, now we don't have to be done. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm if you, I didn't know if you had something else that you would share to help people okay. who, um, you know, need to begin letting go of the yuck, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't have to wait until God sits you down and goes, let's get it with the yuck. If you know you've got yuck, <laughs> like with the yuck. <laughs> stubborn like me. Like, right. Okay. Absolutely. Um, gosh, that's a great, that's a great question. I mean, if you're sort of at rock bottom, I would, you know, find a support group, find a recovery group, find a church, and honestly, maybe just go sit and pray. Yeah. You know, and and just sit before the Lord. You, I mean, you can sit before the Lord at your home, um, and and ask Him what He wants you to do. Yeah. And it, you had a spiritual mentor. You had someone who helped you understand mm -hmm. the um, the truths that you just weren't aware of. And you, even today in your podcast, you interview people mm -hmm. who are well versed in what Scripture says and who are well versed in what God does because they've seen it with their own eyes. So there is a, uh, I think a we could make a real high recommendation to find someone who is ahead of you in the faith, who is ahead of you in understanding and knowledge. And the way that you know, so some people will act as leaders when 
they're not necessarily acting biblically. So the way to know is, um, does it line up with how Jesus was? Jesus was the demonstration that God gave us of himself. Yeah. And so does it line up what they're saying with how Jesus is? And does it have the same impact? You know, does their ministry, does that person's ministry have the same impact mm -hmm. that Jesus' ministry had? The, you know, you can look at the Acts of the Apostles and the community and the way they cared for one another and the way they survived um, persecution. They, they thrived um, and believed. So if, if someone's ministry isn't having an impact that feels a little like that if they aren't speaking what feels like jesus mm -hmm. then it's possible they're still learning too right so you yeah. might need a different mentor yeah yeah i mean i think that goes throughout life whether you're in business or anything you need a mentor you need someone that's ahead of you that can help you grow and so i've had those along the way for sure and um I think what's been really cool about this experience, though, is that the Lord has placed very, very specific people to sort of speed up my spiritual growth. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. So, and I'm very honored and very blessed in that just to have crossed paths with those people, too. I am grateful. I am grateful to have crossed paths with you. Um, it's so neat that one of our mutual friends who I look up to said, you need to meet Heather. And I said, you know what, if Meg recommends you, then yes, I do need to meet Heather. <laughs> <laughs> she is always right. Uh, so yeah. that's off to Meg. Okay. Heather, how can they learn more from you? They sure. can get a hold of both of your books, right? And your podcast. Yep. Where? So you can find the books at heathervshore.com. Um, the podcast is called Pursuing Redemption. It's on all podcast players. So Spotify, iTunes, just across the board, um, iHeartRadio. And um, you can also get the books on Amazon. And so um, one of the books, though, is translated into Arabic. And so if you do have Arabic speaking friends, um, it is available in that language as well. Wonderful, wonderful. Which book is it that's translated? The Deeply Wounded Hope about domestic Deeply violence is translated. Oh, how important. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That's really neat. What inspired you? Um, did you just have somebody in your life who was able to translate that or did you have to pursue that? Spirit. No, it was Holy Spirit. Wow. I, I studying and Holy Spirit was like, hey, go get this translated to Arabic. I'm like, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> nope, nope nope i think it's very very important yeah. and then he just put all the balls together and i yeah and so now i i help serve a very tiny tiny bit with um the afghan families here in tulsa so <gasps> neat we recently had well recently like a year ago had um a lot of refugees come to tulsa and it's such an honor to have them you know find a safe haven here. Um, so I'm so glad that you're part of that. Yeah, that's been a fun adventure. And I have the sweetest little family of six. So ah, how cool is that? Yeah. All right. So Heather V. Shore is yeah. where you can find her on any kind of social media. And it's also heathervshore.com. You can also find the podcast at, um, ah, it just left my mind, Redem oh, Pursuing Redemption. On ah, thank you. Pursuing <laughs> Redemption. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And God bless you. Yeah, same here. If All you right. need prayer or you want to talk about this, reach out to me or reach out to Heather. And blessings in your journey. Have a good night. <laughs>